I'm a single mom as well. Like, I'm looking for, um, I'm ready to, like, have a man, and yeah. I want him to have, like, financial, physical uh, value, because uh-huh. I'm not valuing that. Yeah. But I feel kind of like a gold digger. Like, I'm just looking for men that have mm-hmm. worldly success, I guess. Yeah. This is a really good question. Thank you. Thank you for your authenticity. Thank you. You're welcome. Because... We have to, and I shared that in the program two weeks ago or a week ago when we had the program, and I'll share this again. We feel that we are better than we actually are, and we feel like I want the best um, man who will provide for me and my children. And when we have this feeling in the background, women feel like somewhat even entitled, like I want and I deserve this kind of man. And I shared that if you're going to get right now a man who will provide and protect the best of the best that you want, you'll actually degradate and he will degradate because we are attracting each other in order to help our partner to grow and for us to grow because a main job of a woman to have the connection to the source, to the creator, to God, universe, however you want to understand it, and do her meditation and do her prayer or do her affirmations so that her vibrations go up and she gives that to her husband to become the best provider. But we women are crafting our men. For you to meet the best version of a man that you want, you have to be almost like sinless goddess. But let's be honest, we are not sinless goddess. Do you understand? (laughs) You have to be almost like a Virgin Mary to meet a man who you're seeking. And we each have that in our brain. We each think we deserve better. Or even if we're married, we think there's better men. And if we're single, no, it has to be even better. And that's how We're violating ourselves by continue working and keep looking for better, for better men and not giving a chance for a real man that is next to you. And your job is to build him up to become this provider and protector. I'm not saying to meet a man who has no job and who makes $10 an hour working in McDonald's. I am not saying that because we attract what we deserve. When I met my husband, I was making <clears throat> really good money, like a really <clears throat> professional woman who is working to achieve all of the success. And of course, I met a man who was making three times lower income. But the more I was doing the spiritual practices and understanding this knowledge and start letting go of this masculine energy, the more my husband started making money. But I was focusing on myself and working on myself. And now when I looked at my husband, who he was and who he is now is two different men. When I look at myself, who I was and who I am now, some people who haven't seen me 10 years, they're like, what? Who are you, Alisa? You have different energy. You have different vibe. You have different values, different beliefs. We have nothing in common. My friends 10 years ago were people who were either wanting to make millions of dollars or already made millions of dollars. Real estate brokers, restaurant owners, people who work with celebrities, very high up people. Because my goal was money, success, material goods. But then I was always exhausted. And I was not fulfilled and happy. And so here... As a woman, we have to realize that we cannot chase money in a man or chase money ourselves and hoping there will not be a cost. We have to come back into reality. And when we're surrendering ourselves to our creator, he knows better what you want. It's like a few days I had to realize, oh, he doesn't want me to go to Bali and Europe now in six months. It will happen on his terms. And our job is to trust. That trust. (laughs) Yes. Yes. And by the way, 
We don't trust ourselves and we don't trust our partners because we don't trust him. Once we trust him, we start then trusting ourselves. And only then we start trusting our partners and our children. And when we don't love him, you're welcome. We don't love ourselves and we don't love our partners and kids either. And that's why this relationship between us and him, it's so important. Because we're walking around empty and like, okay, somebody love me. Maybe boyfriend or husband will give me this love or kids. But this real love that we want, we're walking around with emptiness and we want love, it only comes from there. Husband will give us this, kids will give us this, but it's very little. We want a lot, especially us women. That's why we're watching romantic movies, love movies, love music, everything because of this lack of love. And we're going to get it from him. And the more you're going to put in the time naturally into meditation, the more you're going to start feeling it. And that's a beautiful transformation. But at the same time, also following this 10 Jama Niyama's principles, which today we covered the fourth one. And the fifth, I'm just going to give you a hint, but we're going to go into more depth of it next time, is who we're surrounding ourselves. Because now I cannot be surrounded with people who are into money. Because they think if they have three restaurants and they work 40 hours a week, sometimes even 60, and they're not sleeping properly, they're not eating properly, their marriage going out of the drain, but they're chasing money. If you're around people like this, it's going to impact you. That's why I'm every night I'm thanking higher power for sending me girlfriend who has the same principles like you. Even though we have a different faith, it doesn't matter. In the core, it's the same. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. And at the same time, when we have a group like that, where we're growing in our feminine and spiritual energy, our vibration go higher, then you're going to start impacting your girlfriends. Or your girlfriends will change. And it's okay. I had to let go 99% of my friends and old community because I realized I am not the same person anymore. And the more I was going into depth of spirituality, the more I start attracting gurus. Now, every night, I'm with a different yogi monk in the conversation. It's pretty extraordinary. It's a completely different like, lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like having girlfriends is a very important part of the femininity? I'm kind of a loner and yeah. I don't have many friends. Girlfriends to women, very important. Women are loners when they are more connected to masculine energy. They don't feel a need because they are mm, concentrating on how to make more money, how to succeed, how to provide. And their thinking, their logic is very close to men's logic. When woman shifting to femininity, she has to share her emotions and feelings to connect, to talk, to share experiences. For example, for me to go right now to vacation without a girlfriend, at least every once in a while, is very difficult because my husband doesn't want to hear me two hours a day. It's a lot to him. <laughs> I want a girlfriend. So I create vacation in such a way where families go together. Husband does their thing and we girlfriends connect, cook, chat, draw, whatever that we do, meditation and yoga and etc. And so girlfriends are very important because girlfriends give you this energy of love and they help you to continue to grow in your feminine energy. Because love we're getting either from feminine girlfriends, from nature, from meditation and lectures like this. This is only four sources. Men don't gonna give you femininity. Kids will not give you fem uh, femininity and energy of love. They take. And girlfriends, feminine girlfriends exchange. You give love, she gives you love. Elevate. You pray, you meditate, you elevate. You listen to spiritual knowledge, you elevate. You walk on the nature, you run on the nature, you elevate. Everything else, 
takes away. TV takes away. Black box. News takes away. Masculine girlfriends. Work takes away. Your desires, financial goals, um, thinking how to invest money or save money for your retirement takes away. All of that is for man. It's their responsibility. And we're taking, walking into their territory when we're thinking, I need to change oil, I need to fix computer, I need to save money for retirement, I need to invest into my kids something else. All of that decision making, all of that is masculine energy. We gotta trust them. But in order to even attract a man like that, we need to get down to femininity letting go and trusting trusting when you trust then god higher power sends you man you're not gonna even look for him and he knows better when i met my husband i felt in my soul he's the one even though five years prior to it i would be no way no way no way but i knew in my soul he's the one but logically if i'm connecting to my masculine energies like he needs to make more income. He has to have black hair. He needs to look a little bit more like Latin. Do you understand? Yeah. But once you connect to femininity, you see the soul. You see the person inside and out. And you feel like, no, he is perfect for me. He is the one. And who sends him is not me looking. Higher power sends him. And in the first time when I met my husband, I started to accept that here I am in the United States because for the longest time I wanted to move somewhere. <laughs> because again, I like third world countries better. The soul is much deeper in the third world countries. Country could be poor, but the depth of the soul is much deeper. Any questions, ladies? He's very into health and wellness and has helped me a lot in my health and wellness journey. Yeah. And he has so much knowledge and I want to help him, you know, share that to the world. So even like sometimes I'd be like, oh, do you want me to edit your videos or things like that, which I love to do. But sometimes I feel like, am I putting myself in too much of a masculine energy? If I mm. do that, mm. there's still kind of like a weird or not weird, but like a conflict, but yeah. an inner conflict. Yeah. Yeah, and that's where you have to listen to yourself. Because as a woman, when you want to serve, that's about love. But when you want to help and take away from him responsibility, that's a masculine energy. And then you're not trusting him to do it. Yeah. It's easy to cross sure. this line. And even though right now I am not working, but I have so many projects so many projects but i do this project on the time when i'm not busy when i already served my family everything cooked and served then i work on the projects i work on the projects helping two daughters doing the social media etc you know and it's my service to them because when we're serving our teachers we take on their energy we're taking on their blessing we are in tune with them and that's where we can learn the most from them you're in a close contact as you're serving you're really fully absorbing their aura and you learn that's how you grow fastest with regards to the stealing or aparigraha and again aparigraha is also askeza uh, askeza, if you remember what it means, askeza, when you are fasting, for example, you are not eating meat and you're just drinking water for five days or a week. It's askeza. And askeza in uh, Apaligraha, where you want things, but you're saying no to it. And the best exercise for that is you go to the store, you need to, you want to buy something, but you're saying no to it like no i don't really need that i don't really need it you want it but you don't really need it how can i be in my feminine energy if i'm a single mom so for those of you here on zoom and online you probably should know that the fastest way to get to the feminine energy 
is to do the spiritual practices on a daily basis, either meditating or doing the affirmations or doing the prayer for a minimum of 5-10 minutes in the morning and 5-10 minutes in the evening. And I have videos of how to do meditation or mantra. And you see, we adjust. For example, since I stopped working a year and a half, you would think that having less vacation and going buying less toys or less clothes to our son or me or husband would make me less happier, but it's the opposite. I am the happiest I've ever been. Like you taking back to the childhood, it's stress-free life. I want to lead this program right now. I am with you, ladies. If I don't want to, you know, I will say, let's move it to next Wednesday. I don't have to. I'm choosing to do that. That's a completely different space. Do you get that? We don't need much. It's an illusion that we really need much. It's again, it's the society, material society that constantly pushes on us that we need more. We need more. But we don't need yeah. more. <laughs> we don't. We, we, we honestly don't need yes. more. Like I, like I said, you just brought me back and I was like, wait a minute. It's critical thinking. I'm like, okay, this is just capitalism, like you said. They're just yeah. putting it in our brain that yes. so on and so forth. And the same thing with men. Oh, you have to come and save me because I'm the princess. Yes. Um, yes. That, yes. that right here that society have this thinking, you know, it really messes up when we we're kids. Um, because when we we're kids, we'd see everything happy. Well, um, but, le then... but let me talk about this princess thing. Because woman in the background has a lot of emotions. And mm -hmm. she needs a stronger man in order when she has those bad days, when she's over emotional, he can calm her down. So in a way, each woman wants this protection from herself. And that's why men are very logical, very rational. And we need them to be this way. And that's why when we are feminine, we're very emotional and we complete each other. And yes, yeah, sometimes women has those days when she's really frustrated, really upset, especially during the cycles. And man is there to calm her down. He can hold her and say, everything going to be okay, honey. I got your back. And woman comes down. But woman, modern women are even afraid to be this be vulnerable, soft. vulnerable, 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 <laughs> to even share that she needs him. She needs his strength. She needs his protection from herself. Because her mother called her and said so many terrible things about war in Ukraine, for example. She's now really frustrated. Or she said how bad she's raising the kids, for example. Or how she's unhappy because her husband died and she's alone. Whatever. She had just really emotional day and she needs her husband. Who she can lean on. Who will calm her emotions down. We're not designed to be independent like I don't need anybody. I don't need you. I can figure out my emotions. I can figure out my income. We have to be dependent on each other. We're born to be dependent on our parents. Then at 18, we got to detach to be independent from them, to learn how to go to college, how to drive, how to go to work. And then when we find each other, we got to learn to be dependent on each other. Men really need this love from the woman in order to feel needed, in order to feel appreciated. And the woman needs him to protect her, to provide for her, to lead her. And that's how we got to come back again to dependency. And in the United States, in the Western world, it's like, no way, scary, dependent. No, all men are narcissists, or women are all narcissists. They're all just gold diggers, or they're all cheaters and liars. And that's not true. When we overcome those traumas, we really want to serve. A man wants to provide naturally and protect his woman who is vulnerable and who is feminine and loving. And the woman yeah. wants to serve. She wants to cook. She wants to organize the house and give her her love to her husband and kids. It's just natural. But if she gives all of her energy to work, of course she comes home empty. How can she give love to husband? Yeah. 
And that's why we have to relearn that everything a capitalistic society, modern society is telling us is a, it's a big lie. And again, I'm saying something right now that it sounds like, no, actually, we are walking around the sun and not the sun is <laughs> running around us. But it's the, the knowledge. That's why we need spiritual knowledge. It's the truth. And not some motivational speakers who are interested to make money and pump you up for two, three days and you feel, yes, I'm going to go make zillions of dollars. And then after three days, you go down. And the reason why you go down, because you're not even designed to work in this field or go to work in the first place. And deep in our soul, we know our love belongs at home. Very true. Yeah. I remember when I used to despise the cooking, cleaning, and I will tell myself, well, I'm going to make money so I can have a maid. Well, through all the spirituality that I've been doing here, there, um, obviously with you, it's being like, poof, you know, it just went like to the, to, to the ceiling. But before, um, when I started doing my spirituality, I started enjoying cooking and I used to this, I said, like, seriously, mm -hmm. I used to be like, well, I'm going to be rich or I'm going to make money and I'm going to have somebody to be nannying my kids and so on and so forth. But now that I'm in, now that I have the knowledge that I have, I'm like, no, <laughs> Yes. I'm cooking for my yes. family. I'm doing the things and I, I will provide um, for them. By the way, when I shared that all my friends who were making millions of dollars 10 years ago, very seldom when I rarely see them in town, I connect and we talk for five, 10 minutes. I very quickly learn. Yes, they're still making this millions of dollars, but they're either gone already through tumor or they've gone through cancer or gone already through divorce and their children are not talking to them. So again, this money has a huge cost on us. Because when we see we're struggling with health, because that's the biggest impact on our health, the attachment to material goods and the money. But then it's worse when we see the struggling of our children. And then we're going to still spend all this money that we, meant, that we made on doctors, either on our health or the health of our children. So there is no escaping. And the only thing we have to really work on is to surrendering and accepting what is and stop detaching what I want more because there will never be enough of this. You will always would want, want more. Uh, I grew up with two parents that were full time and it was like my childhood wasn't horrible, yes. but I did realize that the absence of a mother and the what happened with that. Yeah. And so, yeah, that probably my daughter is the only thing that would have pulled me out of that big matrix of a lie of what I is important. So, yes. Yeah, the kids are the ones that gave me. They are our greatest teachers. Sometimes I ask our son, I said, would you like me to go back, maybe work one or two hours a week so we can go to Mexico uh, next month? And he says, uh, but if you don't work, when will we go to Mexico? I say, maybe in four or six months, because dad right now has to work a lot. And he says, it's okay, mom. We can wait when dad's going to make money so we can go to Mexico. <laughs> they will be honest. They have no filter. They don't lie. And I was, it's oh, not I like if he would say, go to work, I want to go to Mexico, I would go to work. But I just test. And they immediately yeah. say, no, no. Didi going to buy a ticket in January to come to Atlanta. I already gonna forward her the money that we raised and data we don't have enough funds so my biggest request if you can make a donation whatever that you can whether it's 10 or 15 dollars whatever that you can it will help us to raise funds for data to come here because when they come for we're gonna have a half a day of retreat basically whether it's online whether it's in person you feel their energy 
And monks, again, they meditate hours a day. When you're in the energy connecting with them, your spirituality, your vibration go much faster, higher. You know, you will not going to get, you, you get just a little bitty thing from me. You just, you can't compare me to monks at all. You know, I give the knowledge, but their practices, daily practices is just truly incredible. So I highly recommend for those who can make it here in person in January, please do. Or in February, that will be amazing. Do you know when in January? Yes, last weekend. Yes, last weekend in January. Didi awesome. going to okay. be here. Yeah. Dada, I Perfect. need to talk because we didn't raise enough funds. As soon as we do, we're going to book the trip as well. But Didi is purchasing the ticket for the last weekend in January. Yeah. So Saturday and maybe a few hours on Sunday. Yeah, but definitely Saturday we'll spend five or six hours with her. Oh, I see Edith. Edith, we're finishing up. So, uh, but you're going to see, um, I'm going to download it. Gabriela going to help me to edit it. Thank you, Gabriela. <laughs> and I will forward it to you, friends. So I want to acknowledge you. Thank you for being here. The next meeting going to be in two weeks. And in the meantime, thank you for your help to growing our spiritual group, for your volunteering, for your shares, for all your support. And thank you for raising funds for Didi and Dada so we can meet them online and in person and spend with them five, six hours. It's gonna be incredible. Yeah. So with that, friends, namaskar. 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 Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye, ladies. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you so much.